Welcome to the next installment of Math on the Move. We are all math people. Many of us have found ourselves a part of this scenario. You're out to dinner with friends, and when the waiter brings the bill, someone in your party asks, can you help me figure out my tip? I'm just not a math person. We would rarely hear anyone say, can you read the menu for me? I'm just not a reading person. However, somehow, in our society, it has become acceptable to not be good at math. This video will look at how our schools are working to change this perception so that we all see ourselves as math people. Psychologist and researcher Carol Dweck and her colleagues have discovered a simple but powerful idea that belief and mindset play a huge role in learning and achievement. This video will introduce you to the importance of having a growth mindset in mathematics, how a growth mindset is being developed in our schools, and how you can help at home. With a fixed mindset, people believe that their intelligence is fixed and cannot be developed, and may say things like, I'm just not a math person. On the other hand, with a growth mindset, people believe that through perseverance and hard work, intelligence can be developed. Students who learn to have a growth mindset show greater motivation and achievement in school than those with a fixed mindset. A growth mindset is not only a powerful belief, but also backed by science. Brain researchers know that all brains, young and old, are malleable. When we work hard and persist with a new task, our brains actually grow and change shape. In this next clip, let's watch how this teacher encourages the student to persevere and how the student responds. All right, and what happens if you draw them and you find that they're not five equal pieces? How could you solve that? Try a different way. Okay, so maybe try it and then see if it works. And if it doesn't, that's okay. I don't know how to do it. Like, I don't have any idea of how to do it. Why don't you try drawing and see what happens? Sometimes pictures help. Hmm. It's okay if you get it wrong, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. As long as you try. As long as you try, you're right. The language we use greatly influences our mindset. Listen for your internal voice. Are you using growth or fixed mindset words? What we say is an important first step in developing mindset. Even saying things like, you're so smart or talented, leads to the belief that effort is only needed if you are not smart. Many of our classrooms are creating charts like this to make students aware of their powerful voice. Mindset researcher Carol Dweck believes in the power of one simple word, and that word is yet. When you find yourself saying, I can't do this, simply add the word yet. Talk back to your fixed mindset voice with growth mindset words. Brain researchers have proven that our brains only grow and develop when we make mistakes and learn from them. A student's brain sparks first when they make a mistake, and again when they are given the opportunity to learn and reflect on that mistake. Teachers are setting up classroom environments that encourage thinking versus simply supplying the correct answer. Students are no longer feeling embarrassed or ashamed when they make a mistake, but rather see it as an opportunity to learn something new. Our brain is like a muscle that gets stronger and works better the more that it is exercised. Every time you work hard, stretch your brain and learn something new, your brain forms new connections and over time you actually become smarter. Someone with a growth mindset embraces hard work and challenging tasks because they understand that this is the only way to grow their brain. Conversely, someone with a fixed mindset avoids tasks that are challenging and often gives up when they are stuck. So how can we help our children at home? Parents can help their children develop a growth mindset with these simple ideas. We are our child's main role model. Be aware of your own mindset. Do you believe that intelligence is fixed or can be developed? Sometimes, without realizing, we say things like, you're so talented, or I'm not a math person either, or some of us are just not artistic. These statements suggest that we have no control over our learning and are born with only certain talents. As parents, we can praise the learning process and not the end product. For example, you work so hard on that, versus you are so smart. And I love how you stuck with that task and didn't give up versus you got a great mark on that test or what did you learn about this topic versus what was your final mark. We can also celebrate mistakes in learning. When your child makes a mistake, reinforce how important this is and work through the misconception together. Highlight your own mistakes and how they have helped you learn. 
keeping these strategies in mind when working with your child at home will positively impact their journey as they endeavor to learn math. If you're interested in learning more about mindsets, these resources are a great place to start. Thanks for watching.